Okay, in today's video, we are going to go over how to calculate the change in potential energy of an electron when it moves from the first energy level to the second energy level in a hydrogen atom. Here we have a model of our hydrogen atom. In the nucleus, there is a single proton. Orbiting the nucleus, there is a single electron for a neutral hydrogen atom. The first energy level, the distance from the nucleus, from the proton, to the first energy level is Ri. That's our initial distance. We're going to start here, and we're going to move it from the first energy level to the second energy level, Rf. Okay, the initial distance between those two, the proton and the electron, is 5.29 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. The final distance is 2.12 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. And the charge on the proton is equal to the charge on the electron. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Coulomb. And we're going to figure out what is the change in potential energy. We're going to figure out how much work would we do if we were to move that electron from the first energy level in a hydrogen atom to the second energy level in a hydrogen atom. Now we want to calculate the change in potential energy, and this is the equation that we use. The change in potential energy, this is on your AP Physics equation sheet. The change in electric potential energy is equal to the amount of charge, that's the proton because that's what we're going to move, and the potential through which it is moved. So if there's a potential created by this positive proton in the nucleus, and when we move the electron from one location to another, it's going to move through a potential difference. That's what delta V stands for. Now, we're not given the potential difference. We're not told, oh, the potential difference is 12 volts. We're not given the initial potential and the final potential. We're given the distances. So we have to calculate the initial and the final potential. And to do that, we use this equation. The potential is equal to K, Coulomb's constant, times Q. This is the charge that is creating the potential. So we use this charge is capital Q. This charge that we're going to be moving is lowercase q. Now, in this case, they happen to be the same, but if they're not, remember, the central charge that is creating the potential is usually designated as delta q, or at least that's the way I like to think about it. Then divided by the distance between them, and we have two different distances, so we're going to have a final and an initial potential. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term and substitute it in here for the change in potential. So we get that the change in potential energy is equal to the amount of charge, this is the electron which we're going to move, times the change in the potential, the final potential minus the initial. Remember, the change is always final minus initial, K, Q, K, Q, R, F, and R, I. All right, so now we can just plug our values in. All right, the change in potential energy is equal to the amount of charge. This is the charge on an electron minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulomb. Now, I have a lot of numbers. I don't have a lot of space, so I left the units off, but this is Coulomb. You should know that. We're going to multiply that by KQRF. K, Coulomb's constant, Newton, meter squared, Coulomb squared. Now, plus... When you calculate potential, when you calculate potential difference, when you calculate change in potential energy, you have to use your positive and negative signs because there is a difference between positive and negative potential and positive and negative changes in potential energy. The sign for the electron is negative. The sign for the proton, which is creating the potential, is positive. So that's why I put positive here for emphasis. To multiply these two, divide by the distance between them in meters. Okay, this is in coulombs, this is in meters. Now we're going to subtract from that the initial potential. 9 times 10 to the 9, just newtons, excuse me, newton meter squared coulomb squared per coulomb squared times the charge divided by the distance between them. This is the final potential. This is the initial potential. We do all that math and we come up with the change in potential energy is plus. 3.27 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. This is a positive change. Okay, now let's just look a little carefully. This term just turns out to be about 6.79. This term turns out to be a little bigger, 27. When we subtract these two, we're going to get a negative number, about minus 20 times this number, which is also negative. A negative times a negative 
It's a positive. It's a positive change in potential energy. Now let's see, does that make sense? Well, we have a positive charge and a negative charge. We're moving the negative charge away from the positive charge. We're moving it to a place it doesn't want to be. These are opposite charges. They want to be together. So we move the negative charge farther from where it wants to be. And therefore, it's going to have a positive change in potential energy. Just like with gravitational potential energy and mechanics, when you lift something off the earth, it doesn't want to be off the earth. But if you lift something off the earth, then you give that object some positive change in potential energy. And then you must do positive work. Okay, so in this case, it's a positive change in potential energy, positive work, and that is the change in potential energy when an electron goes from the first energy level to the second energy level in a hydrogen atom. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a nice comment in the comment section below, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.